Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to use what we know about Taylor polynomials to approximate the value of this integral, the integral of x sine x cubed from 0 to 2 thirds. To do this we're going to use a 10th degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function x sine x cubed. We're also going to get a reasonable bound on the error of our approximation. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do. Estimate the value of this integral using a 10th degree Maclaurin polynomial for x sine x cubed. So the first step would be to find this 10th degree Maclaurin polynomial. But how do you do it? Certainly not by definition. I'm not taking 10 derivatives of this thing, no way. Instead, we'll use the method that we saw in the overview. Start with the Maclaurin polynomials of a simpler related function. In this case, I think sine of u would be a good choice. If we could find, say, the third degree Maclaurin polynomial for sine of u, then by replacing u with x cubed, we would get a Maclaurin polynomial for sine x cubed of degree 9. Finally, we'd have to still multiply that polynomial by x to get a polynomial for the desired function. When we multiply by x, the degree will increase by 1, giving us a polynomial of degree 10. Okay, so this is a good strategy. We'll start by finding the degree 3 Maclaurin polynomial for the function sine of u. Now, we've actually already done this in the past. I'll let you check in one of our old example videos, or you can just confirm this using the definition of a Taylor polynomial. But what you should get is u minus u cubed over 3 factorial. Of course, we also have a remainder term, r3 of u. Next, we'll replace u with x cubed to get a Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x cubed. When we do this, we get x cubed minus x to the 9 over 6, and we have a remainder term of r3 of x cubed. Finally, we have to multiply the whole thing by x to get a Maclaurin polynomial for the desired function. We find that x times sine of x cubed is given by x to the 4 minus x to the 10 over 6, with a remainder of x times r3 of x cubed. Our next job will be to estimate the error in this approximation, starting with the simplest function sine of u. Remember, we're going to carry our error term through our integral calculation. So according to Taylor's inequality, if we look at this remainder term for sine u, this term in absolute value is bounded above by a constant k times the absolute value of u minus 0 to the 4, since we're doing a cubic approximation here, divided by 4 factorial. Now we know that this constant k is meant to represent an upper bound for the fourth derivative of sine u in absolute value. But hold on a second, what values of u should I be considering when I pick this constant k? Do I let u range from 0 to 2 thirds? Not quite x has to range from 0 to 2 thirds, and u is x cubed. So if x is meant to go from 0 to 2 thirds, then u, which is x cubed, is going to have to go from 0 to 2 thirds cubed, which is 8 over 27. Okay, so k is going to be an upper bound for my fourth derivative in absolute value over the interval 0 to 8 over 27. Well, it's not too hard to check that the fourth derivative of sine u is again sine u. And sine u is positive and increasing over this interval. So that means that sine of u in absolute value is always bounded above by sine of 8 over 27. This gives me an upper bound on my error term of sine 8 over 27 u to the 4 divided by 4 factorial. Okay, now this is a sharp bound on the error, but I have no idea how to calculate sine of 8 over 27. So instead, I'm going to replace this with a slightly larger value that I actually can calculate. Note that 8 over 27 is definitely less than a half, right? And a half is slightly less than pi over 6. So this whole term is going to be less than sine of pi over 6 times u to the 4 over 4 factorial. Since sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half, we get a bound on our error of u to the 4 over 48. Now this is a pretty good bound, but if you were willing to settle for something a little less accurate, you could have simply taken k to be 1. When you take k to be 1, you get a bound on your error of u to the 4 over 24, which I think is still a very reasonable approximation. Okay, so we've managed to show that the error term for sine of u 
is bounded above an absolute value by u to the 4 over 48. If we replace all of these u's with x cubes, we get a bound for our error term for sine of x cubed. We find that an absolute value, r3 of x cubed, is bounded above by x to the 12 over 48. Finally, we need a bound on this error term, the absolute value of x times r3 of x cubed. Well, if we know that r3 of x cubed is bounded above by x to the 12 over 48, then this entire expression should be bounded above by the absolute value of x to the 13 over 48. Notice as well that since we're integrating over positive x values, we can drop the absolute value on x. This is equal to x to the 13 over 48. Okay, we're through the hardest part of the problem. On the next slide, we're going to use this error bound to estimate the value of the integral given in the question. Okay, so we've managed to show that our function, x times sine of x cubed, is given by this 10th degree Maclaurin polynomial, x to the 4 minus x to the 10 over 6, plus some remainder term. The size of that remainder is less than or equal to x to the 13 over 48, and this is valid for all x values between 0 and 2 thirds. Remember that our goal is to estimate the value of this integral, right? Well, in the overview, we saw that the approximation of the integral is given by the integral of the Maclaurin polynomial. The error in that approximation is given by the integral of our error term. So I can separate this integral into two integrals, one from 0 to 2 thirds of my Maclaurin polynomial, and that should be pretty close to the value of the integral of my function. And then I have the integral of my error term, the integral of x times r3 of x cubed. So just to really drive this point home, the first integral, the integral of the Maclaurin polynomial, will approximate the integral that we're looking for. The second integral, the integral of the error term, will tell us the error in that approximation. So let's go ahead and evaluate this first integral. An antiderivative of the function is given by x to the 5 over 5 minus x to the 11 over 66. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 2 thirds. Of course, I still have my error term. I'm going to handle the error on the next slide, so for now let's just leave it alone. By plugging two-thirds into this expression and evaluating using a calculator, what you get is approximately 0.026162286. And then we have our remainder term left over. Our last task is going to be to estimate the size of this error term. If we can do that, we'll be able to determine how close this integral is to the approximated value. Fortunately, we've already done all the hard work. We'll wrap up this problem using the error bound that we found on the previous slide, together with the triangle inequality for integrals. We've managed to approximate the value of the integral given in the question, but we still have this pesky error term to worry about. To wrap up our problem, we're going to estimate the size of this error term using the triangle inequality and the error bound we derived earlier in the problem. As you might remember, the triangle inequality for integrals says that an integral will get bigger if you bring the absolute value inside. That is, the absolute value of the integral of f is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value of f. We gave some motivation for why this might be true in the lesson where we proved Taylor's inequality. So using this result on the integral above, if we bring the absolute value inside, things are going to get bigger. This integral is less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 2 thirds of the absolute value of x times r3 of x cubed dx. Ah, but hold on a second. On an earlier slide, we showed that the absolute value of this term was bounded by x to the 13 over 48. So I could replace this with the bigger expression, integral from 0 to 2 thirds of x to the 13 over 48 dx. Now we evaluate this integral and we call it a day. An antiderivative is given by x to the 14 over 14 times 48, and we evaluate that from 0 to 2 thirds. Well, if you punch this into your calculator, what you should get is approximately 0.0000051, a very, very small error term. In particular, you can see that there are five zeros after the decimal point which means that this approximation is accurate up to at least the fifth decimal place. 
pretty neat. 